Hi, this is Sam Chand, and welcome to Tuesdays with Sam Chand. Every nonprofit organization, some for profit, but every nonprofit, every church has lifeblood flowing through it. The lifeblood is not your building, the lifeblood is not even your senior leadership, the lifeblood is not your uh, money, your budget, your lifeblood are not your programs. Let me tell you what the lifeblood of your church is volunteers, volunteers. Uh, do, do you understand how important that is? Imagine for a moment if all your volunteers went on strike <laughs> next weekend. If no volunteers did what they volunteered to do next weekend, how's that going to work out for you? So what's the value that we put on them? What I want to do in my next two minutes with you is just to give you rapid fire questions. Questions that uh, you need to ask yourself when you're working with volunteers. Number one, how do you recruit new volunteers? Not just put on an announcement from the front saying, hey, we're looking for some people to help us in the nursery. Have you not noticed that when you ask for volunteers, the wrong volunteers will always show up? And then you have to unvolunteer a volunteer. No, you have to recruit volunteers. Number two, how do you retain the volunteers you have and lower the attrition? Because it's all about net gain. Uh, so someone says, well, you know, we've got 100 volunteers. I'm, I'm happy with that. My question is, how many did you have last year and how many do you have this year? If you had 100 last year, you have 100 this year, I can tell you what happened. You lost 25 of them, you gained 25 of them, your net gain is zero. So what are you doing to retain the volunteers you have right now? Number three, what is your onboarding process? What is your orientation for volunteers? Do they know the facilities? Do they know how you think? Do they know how to procure assistance? Do they know who to go to for what? What is your onboarding? Do they know your culture? Do you know their DNA, your, your vision, your mission? What makes you tick? What's most important to you? What's not important to you? Because if they are volunteers, were volunteers at another church and they're coming to your church, they're bringing some of that residue with them. How do you onboard? Number four, how do you affirm the value of their service? How do you affirm that? Now, I'm assuming that you do, or I would have asked if you affirm them. My question is, how do you affirm the value of their service? Next, how do you care for them? Because they become a sub-congregation within your congregation. How do you care for your volunteers? Do they know that you actually care for them rather than you care for them because of what they do. Do you understand what motivates volunteers? Do you understand that? Think of it this for a moment. If you're on church staff right now and listening to me, and by the way, hundreds of churches listen to me uh, uh, in their staff meetings. If you are a staff person on a church, you do what you do because you've been paid to do that. But as a volunteer, a volunteer has a family, a volunteer has a job, a volunteer has other responsibilities in their life, and on top of all of that, they give you the most precious commodity a human being has. Yes, T-I-M-E, time. Do you know what motivates them? Do you know what the key to the heart is? Let me ask you another question. Do you create meaning for them by saying, hey Sam, when you do this, it means this. When you serve in the parking lot, it means this. When you serve in the lobby, it means this. When you are a musician, it means this. When you are a teacher, it means this. When you're a nursery worker, it create meaning. Let me give you a couple more. How are you motivating volunteers to recruit other volunteers? I know you as a leader think you're the only one who can recruit, but how are you training your people to see the kind of people that you see? How are you training your volunteers to recruit other volunteers? And finally, love, affirm, and celebrate your volunteers.